Today, we're here to do a full movie breakdown, criticism, and analysis of Terry and Diane's story from the 2010 film, Why Did I Get Married To? Written and directed by Tyler Perry, Why Did I Get Married To? continues the stories of four couples as they meet in the Bahamas for their annual marriage retreat, determined to fight for their marriages against the most difficult of challenges. Please note that in this video series on Why Did I Get Married To? We've decided to create a separate video for each of the couples so that we can fully examine what happens in detail without the time constraints. Be sure to check out our breakdowns of the other couples as well as our full series on the first film, Why Did I Get Married, linked in the description. In this video, we'll focus on Terry and Diane's relationship. I'm Height. And I'm Cherie. And you've discovered Axiom Amnesia. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this movie, but first, we want to thank all of the supporters who've helped to make this video possible. If you want your name to appear alongside these contributors, make a one-time donation via Cash App or click the thanks button on this video, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash axiomamnesia or become a channel member by clicking the join button to enjoy all of the benefits of becoming a monthly subscriber. Where are you going? They're going on their annual vacation called the Marriage Retreat. The movie Why Did I Get Married 2 opens up with Terry and Diane. They're the first people, the first couple that we see on screen. And they just look like this happy family. We notice now that they have a son who looks to be maybe three years old. So I guess it's been three years since the last movie. Um, it would have to be more than three years. The first one was 2007. This was 2010. So, so they would years. have to work, conceive had a baby and then have him about yeah three or i mean four. i'm estimating him to be about three but you know hey who's counting no well, when course. you get into some of the conversation it would seem <laughs> like he's older than it definitely he seems he like is. he's older um because a three-year-old is not asking some of the questions that are asked in this scene so they do though seem like this perfect family now after they have the son that terry was harassing diane for all throughout the first movie so the kids talk about the fact that they're about to go on the annual retreat and they're explaining who all is going on the retreat. And they're like, Uncle Mike and Aunt Sheila. And they're like, uh, not Uncle Mike, it's uh, Aunt Sheila and Uncle Troy now. <laughs> it's Aunt Sheila and Uncle Troy. What happened to Uncle Mike? And they're like, well, what happened <laughs> to Uncle Mike? And I don't know why I thought that was just kind of funny. So then it leads into this conversation about divorce. And the little boy is like, well, what's a divorce? And all of the adults in the room, including, I guess that's uh, Terry's mother, Diane, three adults. And they're all like, oh, we're not going to talk about, you know, just hush hush about the word divorce. And then uh, they're like, the grandmother's like, you don't have to worry about that because, you know, your parents are never getting divorced kind of thing. Then the little girl goes into this full on explanation about what a divorce is. She says it's when two married people break up because they hate each other and whoever has the best divorce attorney wins. They split up their children, house and their money. They fight over everything. Yeah. So what we know from here, from this intro, is that Terry didn't force Diane to have a baby. Did he force her? He or convinced her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm guessing. I'm guessing she uh, carried the baby. Yes, she she did carry the baby. I feel like because of the last way that we saw them in the previous movie where she was basically begging him to come back home because she would do he, anything. She would. She was just like, I'll do anything, whatever you want. You know, that kind of thing. That was really the last time that we saw them in the last movie. So this was the result of her being willing to do anything. So now they got this extra kid. Um when in the first movie, she was kind of like, you know, I love my daughter, but I wasn't even really trying to do all that. Yeah. And now you got two kids. So it really opened up with uh, Marcus on TV doing his little show on TV. Right. And Terry is like, if he doesn't get out there soon, you know, he's going to miss our flight. And if he doesn't get out there soon, he's going to miss our flight. But you would notice like when the flight is and that he's going to be working and he's always live and this is the time. So I don't know how that works. Um, I guess you just had to throw that in there. And, but Diane, you know, she made a statement when the show brought out cheerleaders and stuff. And I don't know what Marcus said. He said something about, you got to love that or something. When the cheerleaders came out, Diane said, same old Marcus. Cheerleaders. I mean, you got to love 
I'm not guessing. Yeah. Like, mm. but it's if it's part of the show, can you really attribute that to the person personally? But I can't contribute her statement to who she is and how she thinks about well, these things as an attorney. His his statement, maybe the way he reacted to the girls, as opposed to it just like obviously he probably wasn't like, yeah, bring on all the cheerleaders and have them come around, you know. Yeah, I guess you can say that, but how he react is with show producers and they have lines and stuff. Yeah. So I wouldn't just look at somebody on a show like that and be like, look how they are. Yeah, well, she probably don't know all the ins and outs and fine like, details. Like when you watch uh, the new show, well, it's kind of common like what happens on shows. But if you have, <laughs> like you watching news and then they have them read some old cheesy joke or something, you don't be like, Oh, that news reporter is very lame. I'm like, who had oh, yeah. them read that? Who wrote that and forced them to read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it opens up. It seems that they are in marital bliss, really. Yep. It's a little delayed. I know, I saw that. So next we see that Terry and Diane are at the airport. The flight is delayed. And so they're just waiting around for their flight to come and also waiting for Angela and Marcus to arrive because they're all going to be on the same flight out there to the Bahamas. It looks like basically Diane is happy and glowing and everything. Like you're just so happy. What's going on? What am oh, I missing? I'm... And she's so happy that Terry is like, well, what is it? Tell me what's going on. That's not you're... what happened. Well, OK, what <laughs> happened then? What happened? Terry think there's something wrong with her because she is excited about the trip. Not that she's so excited. He is concerned. He's concerned for the wrong reason. Just so happy to see everybody. It's going to be so nice. Well, I took it as he was concerned because she's not usually this bubbly and happy and she seems happy. And he's like, yeah. you know, why are you so happy? And then she just like kind of, you know, makes them an excuse what I call an excuse. And she's like, well, without Mike being there, it's going to be drama free. So I'm excited for it. That's, <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, that's funny. But she is visibly happier and less stressed than she seemed yeah. at the last retreat. But what we know at the la last time she was working and he forced them to drive that time. That, and she didn't want to do that. And now they're flying this time and around. she's just happy and, I guess, less worries, right? Maybe she don't have no big case going on right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or maybe it's something else. <laughs> but we'll see. You really getting on my nerves. You know, some rope and some duct tape and three bags of concrete don't cost okay, that much. You know, when Angela and Marcus arrive, the first thing Terry says after he greets them is like, uh, can y'all keep it down? Because, of course, you know, when they hit the scene, they're always arguing, you know, and Terry is trying to control the situation. You know, we don't want any trouble. Can okay, y'all keep it down? We're not trying to get kicked out of the airport, okay? You tell that to the pilot. So they've agreed to go on this trip, knowing how Angela and um, Marcus are, but they don't want any, he don't want any trouble. He don't want the typical thing that always happens to happen which is just more indicative of like terry's control freakism uh problems that he has <laughs> and then there's something that i picked up on this time around watching and he says good to see you angela as she's walking away good to see you angela now we know terry is a lie because Terry is not really happy to see Angela. And this goes back to one of the things we talked a lot about in the first um, videos from the first movie was this, um, th you know, how phony they are with, uh, you know, pretending, right? He's just being cordial. Oh, good to see you. And it ain't good. He doesn't believe it's good to see her because he even told Marcus, hey, you come visit us, but don't bring Angela with you in the last film. Like, he doesn't like Angela. And in fact, I think he looks at Angela as the problem between Angela and Marcus. You know, but yet he's like, yeah, good to see you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They walk over to try to figure out what's going on with this flight. And Terry becomes very visibly frustrated because he's trying to get the flight detail. He's all like, you know, we're going to be having a connection here and there. And the woman, uh, the gate agent cuts him off. We have a flight to the Bahamas and we're going yeah, to connect to NASA. Ma'am, I understand that. And then she becomes extremely distracted when she realizes that Marcus is the dude from TV. And then they, you know, have their exchange. I'm Kelly. I love you on Sports Shuffle. So then back where Angela and Diane are talking. Angel's like, Terry must be knocking it out. I mean, you're glowing. Are you knocked up again or whatever? You look good, girl. 
I feel good. Terry must be knocking it out. And in this conversation, we find out that Diane actually had to have her um, tubes untied because in the last movie, we found out that she had gotten her tubes tied so she couldn't have any more kids. And she did this behind Terry's back. So she had to, in order to have this son, have the tubes untied and whatever. And again, this is the second person in the movie who is like, hey, uh, Diane, you seem extremely happy. You glowing. You all excited. Like, what is going on with you? And her excuse to Angela is, well, you know, he's such a good father and everything's so great. And, you know, when things fall into place, you just got to be grateful to God. I'm just happy he has his son. You know, he's happy. I'm happy. Now, I guess. Yeah. I, but she said. I'm happy he has his son, right? Mm. Not we had a son or, you know, none of that. And she said, he's happy, I'm happy, which means that her happiness is based upon him being happy. That's what she's trying to communicate, hmm. which is rather odd. And I think maybe this is just indicative of, like, how she is still checked out of that marriage, but in a different way, right? Yeah, but maybe it's like... Happy wife, happy life. I was going to say that. I was going to say it's like the reverse of that. But We maybe... said that about the first film, how they're just reversed. Yeah, that's true. Because I, I was going to say happy wife, happy life. But I guess he, she feels like he's not harassing. Like, I gave him what he wants so he will stop harassing me. Because we did talk extensively about how Terry's personality is where he just going to harass her, harass, harass, harass. Like, he yeah. just won't let anything and go. And all she had to do was have a baby. Yeah. So she had the baby. He has, quote, his son. And now he can shut up and leave her alone and let her do whatever she's doing in her world. We flew over here with Angela and Marcus. Oh. Yes, we, we flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> so once they arrive in the Bahamas, um, clearly the flight was bad. And so um, Diane admits that they should have flown with Pat and Gavin because apparently they could have taken an earlier flight. And you should have listened. You should have listened. Now I got a headache, man. She was the one who said, no, no, uh, you know, I want to check on the kids. Let's take the later flight, which happened to be with Angela and Marcus. And, and they and they cut up on that flight, apparently, the whole time. And so, um, you know, they're exhausted by the time they get there and whatnot. And so then we see that Terry is, realizes that there are jet skis outside or whatever. And he's like, can I go? And I just want to address this. I hate the way he pretends to be like a child. Can I go? <laughs> In this moment, like this ultra control freak man, he's all like, can I go as, as yeah, if he's it's, asking it's his character. wife wife's permission. Yeah. Then it make it seem like the N word that people always say. That I don't want to <laughs> say. Not the regular N word. No, the other N word. <laughs> the one that N and I S T. But don't it? Because uh, if this if his regular character is who he is, kind of like controlling, dominant, you know, want to be at least then to play like that would just be a manipulative thing to do. Well, people say that's what the N word. people Yeah, do, that's so. why I, I don't want to say it, but that's what it makes him seem like. But if he was just a regular character, I guess if part of his character wasn't to be so dominant and stuff like that and controlling, then it would seem like, all right, he's just playing like, you know. Can I go, you know, like a child? Mm -hmm. So then he leaves the scene and the women, the three women, Sheila, Pat and Diane are all there. First thing they say to her is like, girl, you know what's going on? Look at you, Miss Thing. You are glowing. Mm -hmm. You look gorgeous. You are glowing. Mm -hmm. So now everybody who sees Diane agrees that she's glowing. Why is everybody saying that? You are. That's mm -hmm. why. They even go so far as to say they haven't seen her like this since she and Terry first started dating. <laughs> I haven't seen you look like this since you and Terry first started dating. Wow. They dropping strong hints. Up yes, here. they are. Tyler Perry. But you know what uh, Terry said was, you know, we flew over the cuckoo's nest, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the beginning, you know, based, you know, from the movie and the play, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Uh-huh. You know, and what I found out was that I've been seeing it before, but the show on Netflix, Ratchet, is a is a prequel i think about the nurse that's on that in that movie really i didn't play. know that i didn't know that too but i just looked nurse it Ratchet. up okay because i was wondering if the phrase originated somewhere else mm. but yeah nurse ratchet is you know that's what the show is based on so i might have to check that out ask her why everybody at the airport know who she you know is what? why don't you just <laughs> hello people <laughs> 
let me just also add that when Angela and Marcus do finally arrive and everything, you know, they're arguing and carrying on. But I have to say that we saw recently an episode of Def Comedy Jam, and I did not know <laughs> that Tasha Smith was a stand-up comedian back in the day, and she had a set on Def Comedy Jam. Yeah. She's definitely a much better comedic actress, in my opinion, um, or actress, period. But I was surprised because I, did you know? Before yeah, we saw it? I oh, did I know, but know. I didn't know how how deep she was in. And I didn't know she was on that show, you know, because a lot of people, they just pop up sort of out of nowhere. Right. And they've been on the circuits, but we haven't seen them publicly. So I didn't remember that I had seen her before, but I had knew. And this is stuff that we found out. You know, we did already do the video on Angela Marcus. Check that out if you haven't seen that already. But a couple of things that we've kind of discovered and seen since then. And let me say, some of y'all had told us to go and watch this show for better or worse. That was, what was it on? Was it on BET Probably Plus? BET. It was on something like that. Anyway, back in the day. And it is the continuation of the story of Angela and Marcus, y'all. This I, it was almost unbearable for me it's to watch. It's kind of like a black telenovela. <laughs> it, it it was very weird because it was like, yeah, you're right. It had this feel like a soap opera almost, but it was like part play, part sitcom. It was very, it was very strange. And then it just wasn't that good. It just wasn't good. Um, I didn't now, I, I will admit I didn't watch all however many seasons, four or six seasons, whatever it was. We I couldn't barely get through the first season. Yeah. So but all the people talk about how it's just so annoying to be around those two. And after watching these movies over and over and over, because we watch this every time you see a video, we basically watch the movie. Yeah. So we watched it that many times. And it's so annoying when I hear him and her come. Because, <laughs> you they, know, you already know what to expect. Well, I hear it and it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to Diane and Terry. It's your first time here? Yeah. The Bahamas are great, man. It's paradise down here. I'm telling okay. you. So the guys are all on the beach and they're sitting around talking and jaw janking, basically. And one of the things that we talked about before, but I just have to reiterate here, is that Tyler Perry has Terry, the character he's playing, basically trying to steal the scenes, in my opinion, like with his jokes and monopolizing the conversation. Exactly. And I'm like, what is Terry on? Because he's laughing way too much. He's nothing like the character from the first movie. <laughs> He just like, dang, maybe they were smoking or something. Cause or he's supposed to be so happy now that his wife has fallen in line maybe, and is doing everything he, he just, wanted. Should have seen her in the airport, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, Troy, it was the most insane thing. We uh, maybe it is he's turned into like a little kid. Maybe that's some other condition y'all could look up so y'all could find another word besides that N-word. <laughs> so, but, yeah. yeah. So they spend a lot of the time talking about Angela, which is weird in film. Maybe you have these conversations in real life. But for a movie where you see the characters, you could show us instead of having other characters just sit around discussing it. We know that their relationship is what it is and they're always arguing and she's supposed to be loud and crazy. We know this. You don't have to give us five, ten minutes of them talking about that she is that. Mm -hmm. And what was weird, too, is when it goes all off into like their sex life. And, you know, so then you got Terry engaging Marcus about, you know, his sex life with Angela. And I bet your ghetto ass till I beat me, daddy. Punch this nipple. Punch it. Terry says this one line like, I bet your ghetto ass be like, pinch these nipples or so something related to pinching nipples. His, you know, pinching Marcus's nipples. And I thought that was just weird just very so. odd and then 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 but he calls he calls marcus ghetto so we can't ignore that also because we've had this conversation about the whole class thing and who's in whatever class and whatever and clearly the one point that i feel like is really trying to be made is that marcus and angela and maybe even sheila and mike but definitely or maybe sheila uh are not in the same socioeconomic class uh, or social class as the rest of them or didn't start off that way regardless of if they have money right um and i just i don't know it's just cringe but you didn't think it was weird that he called itself said i bet your ghetto ass be like pinch these nipples yeah talking about pinching nipples you know because he's saying it as if it's something that's strange right so people joke like that you know okay well so it's not like real about real intimacy you know like i bet you she strokes your balls <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> oh my 
my gosh. And then he mentioned it in the last movie and I thought it was weird. But he has to, Terry has to mention it again that his wife is half Asian. Bruh. My wife is half Asian. She ain't having that. Sorry. So. Why? What is the purpose of that? Why do you, why are you it's, saying that? It's something that Tyler Perry found out that he finds very interesting. And so he brings it and up. And Sharon Leal. I mean, actually, Sharon Leal is biracial. And she that's is what I'm saying. He found half that, Asian. That's what he but, found out. So, but like. It's, does it have to go in each script, Tyler? Let us know. <laughs> it didn't have to go in any of them. But overall, here's one dynamic that I really recognized as I watched it this time around. Terry is the one who is mostly having individual conversations with the guys. Like they're not really interacting with each other as a group. They're all individually kind of talking to Terry while the others watch and, you know, whatever. Because um, I think there was really only one or two exchanges between somebody that didn't involve Terry in yeah. this conversation. Terry's a hub. You had Troy talk to Marcus, and I think that's it. Yeah, and and uh, I think Gavin said something to 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 Marcus maybe, but mostly it's everybody talking to Terry or Terry talking to somebody else he's not mentoring as much in this one don't seem no i guess he's trying to drop those medea uh those medea i don't know what you call them gists i guess mm -hmm. and he also says something else in this scene he says um terry says we are nuts to be married like in the in a joking manner right you know uh when he's talking to troy he's like yeah we all nuts we nuts to be married kind of thing and I'm like, mm, I don't know. Are you nuts to be married? Because you seem very happy with the situation. But I guess that's part of the, you know, weirdness of it all, right? You sit around. You're really actually happy with how it is. But you sit around complaining as the backdoor yeah. brag to, you know, my you wife. Know, she's always trying to see if I'm hungry. Yeah, you know, people <laughs> who say things like marriage is hard, right? Like, what's so hard? I don't know. I, that's a genuine question. Uh, hey, you know, maybe maybe for some people it's hard to just coexist with another human being. That's, uh, yeah, I guess I that know. would be very tough. We saw a lot of people really go through that. A lot of people broke up during COVID times, right? When it was during the lockdowns and whatever. I'm going to need to see some actual numbers on those. I would studies. love to see this step. But, but you know, you, you hear, at least I heard anecdotal stories of people who maybe didn't make it through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someday we'll, we'll have to tell you guys our COVID story. But... Um, very interesting. You know, I guess if you're not really used to being around a person for all day long and maybe, you know, you're at work all day and all that. Yeah, you know, but most people aren't even talking about that. They're just talking about just going to work and raising their kids. And that's basically it. Can't do it. <laughs> Man, like, you know, this is about marriage, right? But it's like, OK, life itself, I guess, can be stressful. There are stressors. But to say that, OK, you get married and then now that stress upon that other stress is very weird. Like maybe you shouldn't be married. Maybe not. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, and, or, or maybe you should just toughen up. Like, it's like I just think sometimes people just complain too much about if you do something that's really not necessary and it's causing a negative effect on your life or causing extra unwanted stress, that's just to a maybe. certain point like what's the, well I think what maybe one of the bigger things is just unrealistic expectations right i think that especially from the uh, from a female perspective i i think that maybe the focus is all on the getting of married and not really the staying of married or what to expect after the wedding kind of thing and i just think life is life yeah. right and so if you have these expectations that every day is supposed to be like the first date and every you know yeah i mean and, and i just think in general everyday life is is has a baseline that is far lower than the highs uh that you have when things are just oh my god amazing great you know but they're also it should be the baseline should be a lot higher yeah. than the worst of times but as well through two movies i don't think they answered that question why did I, I get married? Why man? did I get married? Because this, it comes down to why would you get married? Why are you getting married? And then maybe you won't have that. It's hard after the fact. You hmm. probably won't even make it there. <laughs> because that's what people do. That's that's probably the answer for all of them. Because that's what people do where I come from. Right. Ultimately, I think that's why they all got married, because that's what people do. You know, hmm. it's kind of like, why did you go to college? Because that's what people do where I come from. Or why did you go to the military? Maybe you're from a military family because that's what people do where I come from. You know, 
Why do you rinse your rice or not rinse it? That's what people do where I come from. And I mean, in general, it, the things people do but, are based on that. Why did you bring up rice? I, because I know a lot of people who don't, don't rinse their rice. It yeah. depends on where you come from. They say I now, washed them nutrients out. Yeah. So, you know, but then there, but, but but there's, <laughs> there's the argument for rinsing rice because apparently there's, is it arsenic? I think so. There, there are some contaminants that kind of the be same in reason the rice. you could, you should wash your chicken. You, well, we ain't going to go there with the wash the chicken thing because so many people, I don't care what you say or how you try to convince me I'm rinsing my chicken. And yes, I know how to use aseptic technique and not jack up my kitchen and cross contaminate. I'm rinsing the chicken anyway. Uh, argue with your cousin and, and even when you do about that you just um clean yeah the kitchen <laughs> yeah a 10 percent bleach solution would do it <laughs> anyhow uh don't use the same knife you just use to cut up the the bloody chicken on 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 your tossed salad you know like things i think yeah. of as common sense it's but, those you know. so this whole movie and this series is about why getting married but it don't really touch on those most basic things like that like cooking and you know, the cleaning and the raising of the kids and, you know, the day to day stuff. It's they go on vacation and then it's these just big blow ups. Yeah. It's yeah. just what it seems. Not just the day to day stuff, which makes people because a lot of people came in the comments and said, this is why I didn't get married because I watched this movie. When it's not given nowhere near a real representation of what a basic relationship is what happens in a basic relationship. Yeah, I, I think that's, and that made me sad when I saw all the people who say that. Because, because of a fictional movie. And not just that, but then other people would say, um, also because ultimately what I interpret as them not really having positive examples of, yeah. of marriages in there that, that they, but, people who they knew. Okay, they also don't have, well, maybe they do have positive examples of baby mamas, baby daddies, but they still have kids with people. But they didn't say, I seen all these examples and I decided not to have kids with somebody who I'm not going to be with. Yeah, that's So, true. you know, you're picking and choosing won't what you choose well and you, i mean if anything you hear people always complaining about baby mama baby daddy situations yeah, that's and how exactly terrible what it i'm is. saying but you just but you still choose it, to go and but do it yet marriage is like this taboo crazy thing that some you know for somebody that i don't i don't understand the logic on that but you know yeah, a, but part of it is how it's looked at how uh significant it is right because it's like, oh, this is a one time thing. You enter this this big deal. Right. But other people don't look at it like that. And they're just like, yeah, get married. It's just like a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. Every relationship. I mean, I get married. Oh, it's over. Divorce. Oh, get married again. And yeah. that's just how it is. Yeah. That's, that's the standard. That's, that's how a lot of people take it. And so if you're like, though, this is my one shot. But what is really the difference if you just keep having baby mama and baby daddy after baby mom and baby well, daddy? You still you, have in relationships. It depends you if know. you're in an actual relationship with them well, to conceive. That's a little different. Do, you, but yeah. do, do people be having kids by people they don't have relationships with? All the time. That's Watch all the shows about the, the, the young people shows about um, relationships. I mean, as a standard, like everybody's had yeah. the slip up type of no, thing. No, I mean, that's just general, the thing. No relationships and you just happen to have babies. I'm that's so where a lot of these that. problems come Yo, from. Y'all, I'm sorry. You can, you but can roast We're talking me in the about comments, the wrong but, thing. You know. We should be talking about why did I get married to? But too? we are talking about why did I get married too? But like but these we don't are the have... things. This is what you're not going to get someplace else. Because these are the things that come to our minds. Yeah, because the movie didn't touch on it. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> you know, but like I, I, I would. Okay. To answer the question for people, uh, you know, the whole why did I get married thing. I guess you could say reasons possibly to get married. I mean, there's definitely uh, financial advantages to being married, tax advantages to being married. Uh, having a partner that, you know, you've uh, kind of made this commitment and agreement about yeah. what the situation is, not assumptions. And, uh, and splitting those responsibilities. Splitting but the responsibilities. That's where a lot of the people's philosophy on whether or not you should get married now are just what basic relationships are, is the splitting of those responsibilities because they're talking about, oh, I don't cook and I'm not made to cook and clean. Right. But mm -hmm. those, those tasks can be split up amongst the people. Right. Yeah. So and, and it there doesn't are have some to men who do it. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be, Oh, somebody decided this 
two thousand years ago it goes like this, so today it has to go like this. You know, and that's where much of this conversation leads to when people are stuck on like I go to work and you gonna be at home doing whatever, even though I don't make enough money at my job. And, and I right, think, you know, it's just that's where everything, every problem now that people are talking about that you hear on social media, this whole back and forth between men and women, it just come basically comes down to that sort of thing. Yeah, and 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 a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, I gotta love a person this much, and I gotta do whatever. But I mean, even historically, marriages were not they were a they were not about romantic love. They were about I've committed. You know, I mean, if you yeah. think about. Uh, you know, especially people who had money and assets, it was about how do we keep this money that we got going? Yeah, and it's like with your family, you love your family. And if you cut them off, then you could cut your uh, spouse off, which means that why should it be love? Because love isn't going to make that thing work. Hmm. It isn't the thing, you know, but I, but but that's like the the pedestal that marriage is put upon that. Oh, you know, and. Uh, so so That's people the, even deciding it has to be that you love these people this per person this much and since i don't think i love them this much then you know they're you know i shouldn't be in a relationship with them but at the same time like we talked about earlier you know you'll have kids with them you'll do other things that make really decades long obligations to them in some way um where you're going to have to interact with them because I would argue yeah. that if you got married and didn't have a kid and got divorced, that's a very different obligation of interaction than if you have a baby mama or daddy. Yeah, because, and didn't get married, yeah. And, and did not get married, right. Because, ooh, you know, you I, mean, I, I think personally from a moral perspective, you still have some obligation to let this child interact as long as it's safe with the other parent. And, you know, um. But I, hey, it it just is. There are different ways to live life, and you know, folks choose whatever ways. But I, I just think logically, the argument that oh, it's so bad is just it doesn't stand yeah. up. Marriage is what so I mean. Maybe when the um, third part of this series come out, Tyler Perry can touch on some of these subjects. Hmm. Because I think we still didn't get it. Marcus for the password to his cell phone. The women are sitting around and they're talking about Patricia's book. And yeah, they get into the whole cell phone password thing. We had we talked about that in a video about Angela and Marcus. So y'all go check that out. But it gets down to Diane, who doesn't really say much. Her, you know, she's very opposite of Terry in a sense, hmm. where she's not saying much, but then she's like, Yeah, I have his password. I trust Terry, but I do have his. And Angela asks, well, how? And Diana says, you know, he gave it to me. You have it? How? He gave it to me. <laughs> and that's it. It's that simple. Because we know Terry ain't doing nothing. Cause she says that she trusts him, but I do have it because he gave it to me. He's you know? morally upright. That's Terry. Yeah. We know Terry is perfect. Which, let me just rewind back to when they were at the airport and he told the um, gate agent when she got Google Bruh. eyes or whatever um, for Marcus. He was like, we married men. So Ma'am, we're, we're both married. Is this your bodyguard or something? You know, like Terry is it's upfront. It's not even like, your I'm responsibility <laughs> because she wasn't even trying to get with you, bruh. You know, she was trying to get with the other dude and people were like, oh, she brought up her dad, watched it because of what Terry said. But that's not true, because after that, she was still googly eyed talking to him. And basically, that's part of her way of flirting. But why would Terry do that? Like, come on. Terry's like, we're married. We're married. Because I wouldn't do that. I'm not. It's not my responsibility to keep the chicks off of my friends. Well, unless I brought the chick. You know what I'm saying? If I brought this person and you're over here married, right? Mm -hmm. And then there, then I may have some responsibility in that. But other than that, no, this is just some, I don't know this person. Then you tell her you married, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. part of it too is what conflicts I want to be in. Mm. I don't want to be in no conflict with no stranger or nothing. Like it has nothing to do with me. So I'm not, once you put yourself into there, then you're opening up just pointless conflict. Well, what's funny is Terry is all like, well, you know, don't be getting all crazy up in this airport because the people are looking at us crazy. But he doesn't view himself as, um, you know, initiating conflict 
when he's like, look, we married. You yeah, know? especially when you have somebody who's a celebrity, basically, and it's a fan. Well, and that's confrontational. To say, you know, yeah. hey, we married men. That's still confrontational, even though you might look at it like yeah. you're trying to, quote, nip it in the bud. A lot of the nip it in the bud type of stuff is confrontational. And it's meant yeah. to, like, jar the person to, it's meant to put, be a big stop sign, right? Stop it. You have which, confronted it and you've made it stop. Supposedly. Which is a good response on Tyler Perry's part for her to say, is this your bodyguard? Because why is you acting like, you know, you're protecting this guy when you're just somebody who's here with them? You know, it's funny because I never interpreted that as a as a, a reaction to it. But I see what you're saying now. Like in the past, I was like, why would you ask? Is that your body? You know, but I, I for whatever reason, maybe I just didn't put two and two together. on like, that. Um, you dialogue. are you have nothing to do with this dude and you're being his protector or whatever. Right. You're inserting yourself into what's going on between these two adults. Well, and I think maybe because she said it so nicely. Right. It didn't seem to have salt with it. <laughs> And that was probably why I missed it a little bit right I there. I think she kind of rolled her eyes. She was like, oh, is this your bodyguard? <laughs> you know, I was like, what a ditzy. <laughs> why would that be his bodyguard? But okay. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. Tyler Perry's, you know, a big guy. So maybe. But yeah. But you back to the whole thing with Terry, though. I, I think you're right about that. Terry is mm, getting involved in stuff he ain't got to get involved in. One more thing before Mike shows up. <laughs> I wanted to talk, go back to the talk about the password, Terry and Diane. So do you think that Terry has Diane's password or she just accepted his password to the cell phone? I think he has it. Yeah, I was I think thinking that, she probably would have given at it. At what point did they do? I don't know what point that passwords really became a thing. Well, I guess since 2007, you still would have that thing. So I maybe it was part of I'll do anything, basically. Mm. Anything to get you back, please. Okay, you want my password? I'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I'll say is because we talked extensively about passwords in the last video, we a lot of you guys said that you do have your passwords of your spouses and significant others, but there were probably, you know, quite a few people who also were like, No, you know what you need a password for, and you're up to no good if you were trying to have had a password, you're trying to snoop. And so I think some of those folks might have kind of Missed the point on the whole transparency thing, but yeah, it was interesting to get you guys feedback on that. Mike, don't play with me. What are you doing here? Look, I own part of a timeshare. I'm here to have a good time. So, of course, Mike shows up and crashes the party. So when Mike shows up, everybody's just aghast, yeah. like, oh, I can't believe what are you doing here? Blah blah blah. You know, and, and the two yeah. people who have nothing to say is Sheila and Diane. Yeah. Diane just watching. But she's so, not a person of many words. I know. As an attorney who is actually litigating, I guess you could call it. I'm guessing she. Yeah, they said she was a. Yeah, whatever. But I, I just assume that for that type of role and to be that high power, you would. Maybe she's just less assertive around her friends. I don't know. Well, and I also think she probably know the more you open your mouth, the more trouble you get into. So it's probably better to shut up and observe than it is to just constantly be running your mouth. Yeah. Like her husband and like, you know, other people in the crew. Yeah. How much did she say in the first movie? Not a lot. Huh. She's just her personality seems quite reserved, right? She's yeah. she's she's not an open book. That's a nice little take. Mm hmm. Nice little thing to throw in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I The character may be more developed than I gave Tyler Perry credit for in the beginning. Because she, as I'm looking at her now, yeah, she really is mm, just observing what's happening, observing the dynamic, laughing and, you know, just relating to the folks and whatever. And when she's asked a question, she'll give a, a, a information a little bit, <laughs> you know, and that was it. She weighed in and she didn't expound too much. So, yeah, Mike's there. Everything's all up in arms. What's up, fellas? <laughs> What? Mike shows up outside where the men are. Same old thing. Terry's just like, did you go through the house, you know? And Did you come through the house? Yeah. Did the women see you? Yeah, they saw me. You know, his thing is the women going to be upset. And he doesn't say maybe you shouldn't stay. He say, are you going to stay here? 
tell me you're not saying him. Yeah. Right? And and it's just like, we talked about how the, the foot should have been put down. Mike couldn't stay. If they all agreed Mike couldn't stay, Mike couldn't stay. I ain't trying to hear this, y'all, in the comments and last video talking about, oh, well, you know, he put his money down. Screw his money. No, you can't stay here. You're not welcome here. Yeah. He put his foot down against the agent for the airline. Yeah. But he can't put his foot down when it's somebody who's just blew up the whole last retreat that we saw. And he's just who he is. Like, this dude just shouldn't be here causing trouble. Well, he doesn't like conflict unless he is, um, unless he's decided that it's something needs to be confronted, yeah, right? So, which means he accepts this. Mm hmm. You know, and so, and of course, his primary objective once he finds out that Mike has already seen the women is to get inside and get their take on it, right? To figure out, to assess the situation. He ain't really trying to be part of the conversation. Maybe he's just he's gossipy. Like, he is very gossipy. Let's go he gossip. Is. He's like, we going in the house, right? That We going in the house. We going in the house. All right, come on, Marcus. Nah, oh, man, the wake effect has got me sitting on the sidelines. So like he didn't even, the other guys, he just, did, he knew that they would be following him. He's the leader. Let us go in the house. And Mike, you can stay out here with these jet skis. We know. We know. They all go inside and then they start to discuss what they're going to do about Mike. And Diane is like agreeing with everyone. You know, he can't stay. And Terry somehow turns into a lawyer and says to Diane, you're a lawyer. He paid his money. <laughs> you're a lawyer. He paid his money. We can't tell him he can't be here. Yeah, like, we, we can't tell him he got to go. And yes, then you can. everybody's like, I paid my money. I'm going to be here. And, you know, but but it makes sense to me that you should just like, like if you can't make him get out, then you you should just yeah. get out. But they didn't even try. No, nah. because it, you don't it don't have to be your up against the law it's you go to somebody I, we probably discussed this already mm -hmm. and you say hey can you go leave we don't want you here nobody wants you here leave and that's it that has nothing to do with whether or not it's lawful or not if people are going spending their lives quote doing what's legal and just basically what's legal and allowing all of this then you're not really living a life right because everything wouldn't be based on what you actually want and need and in this moment, I definitely think that Diane is assessed and knows her friend group to know that, like, if everybody's on one side, she's not going to be openly confrontational about is she just like, hey, you know, because at the end of the day, she al she also doesn't really have a big dog in the fight. Yeah, it'll ruin her weekend. But, you know, it ain't her ex-husband that's sitting there. Yeah. But it's really bad for Sheila, you know, yeah. in this situation. And we know how they care about Sheila. Mm -hmm, they, and, but Terry says... We all remember Colorado, the dinner table. We're adults. Yeah, no, we all remember Colorado and the dinner table. OK, so we can't control him, whatever that means. No, you can't. You didn't control him at the dinner table. But then he turns around and is just like, but we can try to control him. I don't know about controlling him, but he's right. We are adults. We can handle this. Like that didn't even make any sense to me. It was completely illogical. First, you point out the major reason why he, this dude is a threat. And then you're like, but we can try to control him. You know, uh, we, that doesn't, how does that make sense? Yeah, but control, if you control him, you just say, hey, leave. That's the control. Hmm. M manipulate him into leaving like you did your wife on the trip in Colorado. Hmm. That's one thing that could happen. But, you know, it's just, I guess this is realistic. It probably would happen like this in real life with a group of people. You know, well, because nobody wants to get involved also. It's kind of like, look, I'm here for my vacation. I don't want to be yeah. bothered. But you Tough know, luck, Sheila. All, <laughs> tough luck, Sheila and, and Troy, really. But how about if you just nipped it in the bud the first night? Then you ain't got to deal with Mike this whole time. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. So as, the, you know, they're going through everything and Angela is all, you know, getting riled up and everything. Terry calls Angela ghetto. Y'all be rational. She going to be ghetto. Too. So now he didn't call Angela and Marcus ghetto, like really within 20 minutes of each other. Um, and we'll just let you put that in the back pocket. But it just the yeah. references to them being ghetto is just annoying to me. And Diane basically ends it off because Sheila is basically like, what am I going to do? You know, and Diane is we're not going to give him any power. We're not going to give him any power. We are going to enjoy ourselves. Mm-hmm. 
We're just going to enjoy ourselves. But I think she's right in this situation. She's trying to say we're not going to give him any power. But the next step is also he got to go yeah. or you need to depart from him. And we're not going to waste our time even thinking about him. Right? But it's not up to you. That's the problem with phrases like that and people using it. Don't give anyone the power to so and so. But they do have the power because everyone can manipulate their environment. Mm -hmm. Right. If I walk like at the let's talk about this movie. They went to the airport. Don't allow anyone, don't give anyone the power. When somebody comes and they scream loud, they already do. They had the power to affect you. Hmm. He's there. He's already affected you. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, just change my mind and I ignore him so I can no longer see or hear him. And he doesn't talk to the people that I know that's going to affect how they, that's not how it works. Well, and then a lot of this self-help guru stuff mess that people be preaching, especially on the social media these days, is based in like this this false sense of security and a lie right that you control everything like you said yeah. you know you don't if, control everything in other people in yeah. your environment if you can control everything then so can the other person so at and what the point lie about what, not... how you feel about stuff too right you know you know how you feel inside you know you feel bad but they they're like you don't feel bad you tell yourself you feel you don't good. tell yourself tell yourself you and know. you still feel bad tell yourself you just... i'm the greatest <laughs> <laughs> tell you you know but that ain't how you feel, man. We got to have some level of intellectual honesty about this. <laughs> That's what basically got pulled out. And this is, you know, a little after uh, the, not the help. What's, I was thinking of the help. The help. The secret, right? Oh, so oh, yeah, this was this was prime time. The secret this got y'all twisted. The, the, you know, the secret, man. If y'all, and, and, and we're talking about that, the book, the, the movement, you know. That's really when it um, all kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> At least this wave of it, right? Because yeah. that philosophy has been around for a long time, this idea of manifesting and doing all of these things. And no offense to anybody who has bought into it. Um, however, it's been around a long time. Yeah. I mean, people in the 70s, people, you know, even before that, I, I think about the 70s because this was something that, you know, different people were pushing with uh, metaphysical yeah. type of mm -hmm. philosophies that they had. You know, like there. the dominant philosophies of the times changed through time. And since the secret came out and that sort of a new age wave movement has kind of really permeated throughout society and thoughts. And it probably was pretty close to being a dominant uh, yeah. thought. And just and it's funny because they call it new age, but new age ain't even new age. It's not like they, it's yeah. new age, but it's been around. Yeah, and I think it's kind of like a branch of the new age. Mm -hmm. It's just the updated. It's new age 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, why didn't Troy come? When well, you got to ask, you sit next to our house guest <laughs> over there. So the guys go out. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm remembering this scene that when we talked about it in the last video. But the guys go out on a boat and you asked last time, you know, <laughs> Where is Troy while everybody's out? The girls are out. The guys are out. And Troy is broke in the hotel room <laughs> or in the, in the, not the cabin, but the, the, the beach the, house. Yeah. The cabana, of the beach house, whatever. <laughs> He's <laughs> broken mad. Um, anyway, so everybody's out. The women's out. The men are out. <laughs> Troy is just, bruh. Sheila didn't even stay with <laughs> Sheila should have been like, y'all go ahead. I'm gonna we stay spent with my our husband. last to come out here. Look, he gave up everything. <laughs> he gave up everything to move to Atlanta and everything for Sheila. And she's like, we spent our last and we need to stay on this vacation. And then she going to go and have a good time while he probably crying at the room <laughs> right like now. <laughs> he spent up his last and he just <laughs> upset, angry. Mm -mm -mm. So... <laughs> Um, the guys are on the boat and I think it was Marcus who asked, hey, you know, why didn't Troy come? And Terry's all, oh, well, you sit next to our house guest. So, you know, obviously why he didn't come. And so then Mike goes into this whole thing about how, you know, he misses Sheila and how, you know, he looks back to the woman that he dogged out and wishes he hadn't done it and blah, blah, blah. And um, he talked about how well Sheila could read people and. Terry's like, well, almost, you know, because <laughs> obviously she couldn't read Mike well enough because he just straight dogged her during that marriage. And Terry goes on to just kind of reiterate, like, don't start nothing, man, talking to Mike. Like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking letting her go. We came on vacation. We came to have a good time. I, don't start nothing, man. You done came in here. You done busted up the party. But please don't start nothing again. Trying to control other people's actions. 
and he doesn't want any conflict unless he's the one bringing the smoke. So he tries to convince Mike that Sheila doesn't miss him, basically, and that she is happily married, which the other guys do agree with. Like, Sheila is not asking about you, not talking about you. So you could just forget that is basically the sentiment that Terry is given. Yeah. So what usually happens, what it seems like, is that the wives tell the men everything and then they get together and then they talk about what their wives said about each other. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think this might be couple dynamics, right? I don't and, know about um, that. <laughs> well, I don't know about the part about telling them what the what. So the thing is, somebody has posted this. Was this on social media? Like, I don't trust couple friends because I know you're going to tell your husband. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. You know, I don't trust you because I know you're going to tell your husband. E, you know, um, but I will say that I think that that dynamic happens a lot because people... The pillow talk, right? You know, yeah, they, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about then the guys get together and talk about what the women said. Right. But you wouldn't see it has to start with even getting the information in the first place. Right. Yeah. So, but then so they what go, if they do? But I don't think oh, the pillow is, talk is not the bad. It, all right. It's just, but I'm saying don't I, go what tell happens your friends is, on the boat. Yeah, exactly. It just seemed like they get together and that's what they're talking about. Because they're more gossipy than women. Yeah. Anyway, this, these guys. Yeah, that's a weird group. And I don't know, is this realistic? Are the guys going to say what their wife said? Because I feel like in all of these relationships, the closest relationship should be your spouse, right? These are acquaintances, friends who you see however often y'all see each other that you've known a long time, but your spouse is the closest to relationship, which would mean that your loyalty, I would think, would be there. So why would you go say something that could get your spouse in trouble with somebody else? You know, like, yeah, that's messy. That's very messy. Yeah. And Gavin was messy in this situation because Gavin busted out and said that, you know, Troy didn't have a job, which leads to... I don't to think he meant to do that, but we could talk about that in Yeah, we'll talk video. about that in Gavin's video. And but but it leaves Terry in the position. And we talked about this in the first movie where Terry has to be the the perfect character. He is the perfect person. And here he's able to run interference and say, oh, no, but it's but he doesn't have a job because, you know, he gave up everything back in Colorado and they just moved to Atlanta and blah, blah, blah. And the new house and the baby, you know, no, he's not jobless. They just moved from Colorado to Atlanta. Right. So he's trying to find a job. There's a difference. So he's trying to portray himself as the reasonable guy. If you look at this scene, he said, hey, leave, basically leave Sheila alone. She's happily married. Don't start no mess. You know, so he's back in the mentor role <laughs> a little bit to me here. And he's trying to keep the peace. But yeah, Terry, I mean, these men are a mess, really. Why would Mike just show up like that? Because he's a damn fool. So Sheila is over here with her friends talking about how she busted Troy out, as Sheree would say about not having a job being broke spending their last i said we spent our last yeah i felt that but diane says she wasn't wrong but it's different it's wrong but it is different well, than when you were married to mike i don't know what she meant by that do you know yeah well i think she means that it's different than when you were married to mike because mike had money <laughs> <laughs> and she's looking at them like they're totally broke now Whereas Mike... Well, if you say we spent our last with Mike, then you don't really mean you spent your last. Yeah, probably not, right? Just like I'm sure it would be the same thing with Pat and Patricia and Gavin and uh, Terry and Diane. You know, they ain't gonna be down to their last money and feeling it like that. And maybe not even Angela and Marcus because they did have money coming in, even though we know Angela's business isn't doing as good as it had been in the past. And that, you know, they really do need Marcus's money. Uh, that he makes from the show. But one thing that uh, Diane said to it toward the beginning is she's like, how is Troy dealing with it? And I thought that was very thoughtful of her because, you know, they're all talking about how they, you know, Sheila feel and how, you know, Mike, you know, but Diane brought it back to like, well, how is Troy feel? And she said, I felt that like, she felt that when you said you spent your last, but I don't think she meant she felt it like she agreed with Sheila. Hey, you spent your last, but I felt that that could be a problem. And I understand <laughs> why Troy is upset. That's how I interpreted Diane's words. What do you think? Why do you think yeah, she, she said felt I felt that? that? He, she felt that he felt some kind of way. Mm-hmm. They're all still out here getting their massage and everything. And I thought 
the setup of the massage was a little bit strange because what are Pat and Sheila doing in the middle? Is that a foot massage? Are they giving you a pedicure? Like, what's going on? I think maybe a pedicure, but I, I think can't two of them tell. are getting pedicures and two are getting massages. And then, like, where would they have your tables this close together set up? Like, this is clearly, I don't know. That's I so you not can like talk. a spa. Hey, that's nice they did this for it this group. It is nice, but it just you is getting weird. bit up by mosquitoes and stuff <laughs> out there. But, but um, Angela is talking about Marcus. And how she can't loosen her grip on him because he will run like a wild dog. And Diane is like, you might be right about that. <laughs> God, loosen up my grip. He's going to run like a wild dog. <laughs> she uh, might be right about that. Bruh. But then when Angela started talking about, oh, you're not saying, y'all not saying what's going on, but let me get some drinks in y'all. Diane looked worried. Yeah, because Diane is not an open book. She already mm -hmm. know. I better not. I better sip slow. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, bartender, can I get a few shots over here? So later on that evening, Terry and Diane joined the couples outside playing card. You look good over there. Y'all need to we stop got talking next. across the board. Careful. And then they decide to sit down and they're watching the card play and all of this uh, dynamic go on between Mike, Sheila, and Troy. And they're just so cozy sitting there lovingly. Uh, Diane is sitting on his lap. And, you know, when they walk out, he's basically like, be careful, watch your step. Like, they just seem perfect, too perfect. Um, but interestingly, when Mike tries to uh, engage Sheila and Troy, you know, Terry coughs and does like the hand signal to try to tell him to cut it out and stuff. Hey, Lana. <coughs> Life is good. Thank you. But, of course, it doesn't, you know, uh, Mike isn't going to stop. He just keeps going until he gets his feelings hurt. And uh, Sheriff Troy has to tell him to just nurse his fruit juice and shut up. Sit there. Nurse your little fruit juice and leave me and mine the hell alone. So, um, but, you know, focusing on Terry and Diane here, um, I just think it's interesting how... Di I really feel like Diane is the one who's really running this, even though Terry feels like he is, if that makes sense. Because he he made that statement kind of like happy wife, happy life when they were out on the um, beach. But I think he thinks he's making her happy. And so that's why she's happy. Right. Yeah. And I think she's just like, I, all I got to do is pacify him and then I can. You know, I'm happy because he's off my back, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, so their phone, one of their phone notifications go off and then she gets up, Diane does, and goes to check, uh, you know, check the phone. So, like, they seem to be yeah. open books. And then there's a very loud notification. Because you can hear it from all you the way hear, outside. Yeah, and then they're like, is that you? Is that me? Because our notification sounded like. You know, and in 20, well, this was 2010. People probably did keep their ringers on. But like nowadays, do most people, what is the etiquette? Because I feel like my phone is on vibrator silent like most of the time. I yeah, don't even know don't what the Don't give them the power, like. right? Don't give them the power to reach you. Yeah. <laughs> no. So if you, if you turn, you, you turn it off because it's rude, right? Because you're going to distract people and you just got these loud sounds, right? But that shouldn't matter because people shouldn't give your phone the power to distract them or annoy them or any of that. <laughs> but yeah, I think most people just have it off. I don't want to hear your stuff. That's true. Which is weird. But I do know that I miss stuff because my ring and stuff is always off. Yeah, I mean, and you've been like that for more than 10 years because, you know, like other people, like your family would be like, yeah, Height never answers his phone. <laughs> mm. Cherie never clears her notifications. You're right. I never clear my notifications, and I have like 50 tabs open on Bruh. Chrome. And matter of fact, y'all, listen, I'm going to tell y'all a little personal visit. I just got a lecture today from Height about how I have too many things open. And then he went and, and was like, look, 82% of your memory is being utilized, and you're not even doing anything on the computer yeah, right now. This isn't like 4 gig, 8 gig memory in her computer i can't help it i think you got like 24 it's probably 24 <laughs> i can't it, it's, it's 16 or 24 and she's using 85 percent doing nothing nothing was being done and 85 percent was being used it's because i need all those tabs no 
And I don't want to have to try to search for everything. So if it's always there and always open, then it's right in my fingertips. But I recognize that it could be dragging the computer down. But still, it's just, it's, I can't, it's very difficult to change habits like this. Yeah. Very difficult. <laughs> but Diane had his, it depends on your settings. It doesn't matter if you have, if someone has your password, they can reach your notifications or your messages or something. Well, yeah, because they don't, they come on like your wake screen or whatever. Yeah. It, you have to turn it off if you don't want it on there. Yeah. Well, don't want the contents on there. But she just went and she went check his messages and whatever. And they, the only reason that happened was so that they could, the other couples could have a conversation about passwords. Mm hmm. Did you notice that uh, Pat and Gavin were a little distant tonight? I really didn't notice that. No. Oh, so the ever observant Terry tells his wife, Diane, you know, didn't you notice that Pat and Gavin were distant tonight? Diane says she didn't notice it. I think you were paying attention. I noticed it. I spoke to her. She said they're doing great. Yeah, she don't notice. He's like, yeah, you probably weren't paying attention. And th at this point, Terry is standing there with his shirt off and everything, right? Brushing his teeth. And then he comes crawling into bed like a tiger, you know. <laughs> talk to me, huh? you do that? Yeah. Trying to get romantic. Yeah, Tyler Perry. Weird. But I don't know why. But he put his shirt on before that, right? And then she's just like. <laughs> What did she say? Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Phil? You're funny. He was Phil. And then he like, who, who, who? Who's Phil? Phil? <laughs> She's like, I meant, uh, I'm gonna fill the tub. And I was about to say was, I'm gonna go fill the tub. After uh, he was just coming in, putting his shirt on and brushing his teeth, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna fill a tub. We could take a bath together. And huh. you wanna take a bath together? So in the first movie, the problem was with Diane. But in the second movie, the problem is with Diane. <laughs> <laughs> she just sit up here and call him by somebody else's name. And he's like, who's Phil? Now, my thing is, this is where it falls apart a little bit for me. Because, spoiler alert, okay, Phil is a dude she works with. You, wouldn't you know, like, isn't he one of the other partners or one of the other lawyers at the firm? You would have heard her say his name at some point before. Like, bro, you, eh. but maybe that's just your reaction yeah. to say, you just, did you just call me by somebody else? At that name? level, aren't you doing events and stuff together too? So, mm -hmm. you know Phil by now. You already know who Phil is anyway. Well, maybe looking... that's his thing. He <laughs> just ain't going to say, oh, Phil. But that was funny. She was just like, I meant to say I'm going to feel the, uh -huh. the top. <laughs> But then she kind of like also didn't, you know, she was not really wanting to give him none anyway. So I don't know. She just is. Uh, I, I go back to the whole idea that she still was checked out. She's just as checked out as she was from this marriage in the first movie. It just looks different on the surface. She's gotten better at camouflaging her being checked out. Yeah. So we got perfect Terry again. Mm -hmm. He got to deal with the mess of his wife. So later on that night, they're laying in bed in like this weird position. I, I think they were asleep and then they wake up. But anyway, they're all super cuddled up. Like they're not sleeping like comfort sleep. They're not even spooning. You know, she's just like got her hand on his chest. And his arms are all around her or whatever. And they hear noises and it's arguing from Pat and Gavin's room. Yeah. And Terry asks, is it Marcus and Angela? And then they realize it's not because Diane is like, no, that's Patricia. So if it was Marcus and Angela, they just don't care. They ain't going to do nothing. But since they find out it's Patricia and Gavin, then Diane's like, yeah, I'm going to go and go check on her. I'm going to go back. No, no, no. Okay. Mm hmm. So she goes out <laughs> to see Pat and Pat's in the hallway just at, coming out of the room. Hey, hey, Pat. You OK? And she asked Pat, did I just hear you guys arguing? And then Patricia looks her dead in the face and lies. And she's like, no, we're fine. Did I just hear you guys arguing in there? No. And <laughs> so she tells, <laughs> you know, you try to play the Jedi mind tricks on her. 
And so um, Diane tells Patricia, like, you cannot spend your entire life holding things inside. You can't spend your entire life just holding everything inside. Diane. And that you never tell anybody your problems. And I think this is funny because this also sounds a lot like Diane. Who is Diane telling her problems to? Diane is not expressing what's really going on with her life. It may be a little bit in the first when she in the first movie when she finally admitted that like she really didn't even want kids um, when they were in the store and she was talking to Patricia. But other than that, like she's not going to be very expressive in talking about her feelings and all of this and that. So I thought it was very funny that she gave that advice to her friend, which is the same stuff that she doesn't follow herself. The writer is doing this for the audience to let us know that she's holding all this stuff in, even though we already know that she's doing that. But it came from the wrong person. But also it did not come from the wrong person because people who do that can it, recognize it in somebody else. Maybe? Yeah. Even if they're in. Yeah. Yeah. If, even if you're doing the same thing. So, you know, take it either way. Uh, no, but I was going to go get some water. Go no. She tries to go downstairs and Patricia's like, no, you know, and then she just uh, Diane goes <laughs> on and she's like, well, you. You will lose your mind keeping all that stuff in. and You'll lose your mind keeping all that stuff in. Then, you know, of course, she goes back on to bed because Patricia basically don't want her to come downstairs with her. Go back to bed, okay? Um. So, again, maybe she's telling herself she's going to lose her mind if she keep all that stuff in, too. But she, because she's playing a role, Diane is, too. Let's just keep it real. Diane now has been exposed like we've had clues leading up. You're glowing and everything, you know, but like Diane is pretending. She's pretending that everything is amazing in this uh, in this marriage. And, 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 you know, I don't know, as we get into the movie, maybe things really are good. Maybe. And I knew that I didn't want to spend the rest of my life without this woman. So they get to their why did I get married and we get to hear Terry, but we don't hear nothing from Diane. <laughs> She said, like, 14 years, we're still in love, two beautiful kids. I knew I didn't want to spend the rest of my life without this woman, so I married her. <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. I wouldn't change a thing. And then she say, you're so sweet. You know I love you, right? <laughs> you're so sweet. You know I love you, right? I love you, too. Mm -hmm. Bam. And so, like, why can't we hear from Diane, Tyler Perry? Because Diane is just not the verbose one between the you two You don't have them. to be vi verbose. If both of you are sharing, you chose to play terry's part to put terry's part into the movie this could have been something that diane said we heard enough from terry already in the movie but you know what like people like that you just if it, to coexist she's got to be who she is here she can't be competing with terry for screen time for screen time <laughs> and i say screen time because that's like really what it's like right you know everybody knows a person who is dominates everything they just won't shut up in these public type of uh you know situations or whatever you know and so you can't if you're going to coexist with them you cannot be trying to compete for time for screen time as i would even call it hmm. with, with that person you just go yeah that's how they are and you just kind of tune them out right and then she like you so sweet she didn't even have really anything of substance to say i love you i mean because i love you can be empty when you say it that way you're so sweet. You know I love you, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right, Diane. But what's funny is Terry is keeping up appearances. Your wife just called you by another man's name last night. Yeah, marriage is hard. So, you know, he just, right. he don't stop loving her. And, and the reason that they got married don't change. It don't. But, like, you keeping a front up. This supposed to be y'all's therapy. And how you going to therapize yeah, yourself? You don't come up and be like, all right, let's share our why did I get married. And yesterday she said Phil. Yeah, he should have been 14 years. But and 14 what I can't years, figure out but is in why the she called me Phil. Six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, so they kept up their front, as you would expect them to do. And they smile. And they, yeah, you're, you're right, though. You bring up a really good point. The love doesn't stop just because there is an issue, you know. But at the same time, I, I do wonder, like, <laughs> how, I mean, because he's, but, he just can keep the front going. Yeah, but nothing was confirmed. So Terry going to have to Terry first. Yeah. Even though if Terry can Terry later on, we'll talk about it. But if Terry can Terry, then Terry should already know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think he do know. 
so then comes like the most shocking m- moment in the movie up to this point where Patricia decided to get up there and they supposed to be talking about why they getting married. And Patricia's like, well, here's why we getting divorced. <laughs> and they announced that they're getting divorced right there. And uh, it's news to Gavin because he ain't even know. So, of course, everybody watching is all shocked and everything. And then the ladies go up to support Patricia, you know, and be the good friend that she needs in this moment. And yeah, that's pretty much what happens. And that's basically the end of the retreat. How beautiful it was in the Bahamas. Yeah, Phil, you definitely should. It's beautiful. So right after the retreat, the next thing we really see is that Gavin and Patricia are getting a divorce. And Patricia has an attorney who went from a a capital murder criminal defense attorney to a divorce attorney i know in the last movie she was doing capital murder and now she's doing civil so you went from (laughs) criminal to civil which usually is not even how it rolls but maybe because this is her friend she's um you know doing a favor for a friend Mm -hmm. but you're doing a favor for a friend with money who can pay for a divorce attorney a family law attorney paying her friend but favor for a friend meaning like i you know I'll handle it for yeah, you. Yeah, but you but, this ain't what you do. You yeah, picked the wrong person. I agree. I agree. Like I, that's I'm, not a favor. You're doing the, a. We got some attorneys in there. Listen, are you if you if you're doing criminal law, do you suddenly start doing civil law and, and doing a divorce for your friend or something like? <laughs> let us know. Let us know in the comments because if we if I'm off base with this, I hey correct me on it. Maybe um, she used to do it and she coming back. The big thing is experience. You know the ins and out of what you do, no yeah, matter yeah. what your uh you know no matter what your position is well i mean it's just like with a physician you know if you're if you are a, a pediatrician you know it's a pediatrician like oh you know my, my my friend from my friend group needs heart surgery i'm suiting up and i'm going in the or like it doesn't happen like that but maybe it is an attorney maybe it could happen i'm but sure it, it could just, but i don't it, know if yeah. this was best why yeah right exactly but another thing we don't have to wait too long to figure out who phil is because phil is representing Gavin. Now, I personally think that since both of these people are your friends, but of course we know that Patricia is more of Diane's friend because they were roommates in college and all of that, you know, but still it's it's touchy because Gavin is your friend too, by at least by proxy, right? And do you really want to be the person representing and getting in the middle of this mess? Huh. Because if you're on the other side of the table, like... Doesn't that affect your relationship with Gavin moving forward, Diane? You yeah. Know? And if this is Phil, the Phil Phil, what, do you get two attorneys from the same firm? I don't really know, honestly. Because, all right, let's think about it. They're probably getting a percentage of whatever these settlements are, right? Maybe. Hey. Or do you just pay <laughs> the hourly rate? I guess you get to choose depending on how that setup is. I know we got attorneys that could tell us this. But what is? how could that be? I'm sure it happens, but I don't know. If it that's just bad. feels like a conflict of interest, but maybe, maybe because the, what the first thing Phil says is like, you know, I'm basically, uh, I, I like how you guys are being civil and everything. Of course, it goes Bruh. south in this meeting really fast when uh, that money, that eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars, I think it is, that Patricia don't want to give up from her book sales, you know. But may, maybe because it seemed like it was just going to be quick. Hey, we're going to get this, split everything up. And so maybe that's why they're handling like they were not expecting a fight. You know, it was just going to be this is going to get the paperwork done. We can do it economically. Yeah. You even each of still us have the best interest of somebody doesn't get done if the firm feels that, OK, if we just do 50 50 as a firm, we could get this much. Right. Versus somebody who would be like, oh, for the best interest of my client. You know, well, and I mean, it goes back or to the, my firm who's the, separate. Exactly. The old adage of like, you know, a house divided is uh, against itself cannot stand. Like you can't yeah. have the attorneys coming from the same place. And the and like yeah. you said, the best interest of both parties actually be served. Yeah. It's so, like, hey, if I'm at this firm and I need to do what's best for the firm so that I can rise in whatever position that I'm in then I may choose what's worse for my client right? in the situation. Or likewise, the firm cannot serve two masters. Meaning yeah. They're two clients, right? With opposing um, interests. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But, uh, and of course, we're going to get deep into this discussion and what happens between Gavin and Patricia. But that's not this story because yeah. right now we're on talking about Diane. And so... Um, Diane gave up the life of 
you know, capital <laughs> murder. Yeah, to just become do a divorce for her friend. But Phil is like, yeah, you know, Diane and I were discussing. I was talking to Diane about this divorce. We think it's great how civil you two are being about this. And I'm like, where were y'all at and what was y'all discussing? Hello, talk. Mm. Were y'all in a hotel discussing things? Bruh. I got questions. But anyway. How y'all think of, they just said work discussing. Yeah, we work together. How we going to do this? <laughs> what the with your clients not <laughs> present? Know. Like, wait, huh? It's just everything is just wrong to it's me. It's wrong. <laughs> I, no, just I know that opposing attorneys can't talk, but this is like a work. It, you work together. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's they, different. They, they Your coworker versus without the people, and they're going to report yeah, that to each of the things. But that's not when weird. you're like a coworker on a team with the person, somewhat. Then that's what is little shaky. Yeah, y'all real tight. It's uh, that's the yeah that is too close for comfort. Hey. Hi, mommy. Hey, mommy. Hi. <laughs> Diane comes home with the groceries like she is the perfect Bruh. working wife. She comes in, kisses her husband and the kids, and then starts asking about his day. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hi. 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 She is just uh, you know he, peppy and excited. He is leisurely reading to the kids. This book is about a little boy and everything he tried to do, people would tell him, you can't do that. And, and she come in and she got a cook and she's just looks like she's doing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Such as the job of the working wife. Had a great day. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, you know, it was a, a heavy workload, but still. Uh, for a husband such as this, who, you know, has a bunch of expectations in various uh, areas. And so, um, of course, Terry, because he's a gossip, wants to know what's up with Pat and Gavin because, you know, he knows that they had their meeting that day. And she keeps, uh, Diane keeps attorney-client privilege and she doesn't divulge what went on. She's like, you know, Bruh. I can't tell you that. But, you know, basically check on your friend. Gavin, honey, what happened? No, I can't talk about it. Right? You know that. This is a problem. See, this is why even if it's just, oh, it's going to just be easy, split everything down the middle, you don't represent your friend who is opposing your other friend who is basically your husband's best friend for who knows how long so so i have questions right because this is this makes me think about not just from attorneys but like if you have an accountant if you have whoever and how in life you know we do like to utilize the people who um we know or who are in our orbit you know i'd rather give my money to them but then there are some areas where it's like mm, you know like do you want your i don't know sibling or somebody else, maybe not sibling that's really close but like you know do you want somebody to do your taxes where they know like your income information and all of that who you do know who is in your life who i don't know is the wife of somebody you work with or, you know, somewhere where it might yeah. be too close for comfort? Or do you want, the, you know, the, uh, your physician to also be the person that you went to college with to place your plays golf? Like, is there a point where it's too close where like you just want your business where to be your business? Your best friend's husband is your gynecologist. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. That would be a mess. That would be a whole mess. But like, seriously, you know, there's just some point where I don't know, like where I, I will admit that I do feel a bit uncomfortable. I mean, I know like for us, there, but then there's some point, depends on what it's about. Like, you know, we we use the relative of ours who is, uh, you know, who's an attorney for some, you know, intellectual property uh, stuff that we had going on. Yeah. But what if the fight was with somebody else who we... Who we all knew. Or yeah, another family member. Yeah. <laughs> that would be um, very weird. Yeah, it would be. It would be. So like, I don't know. That, but, but this is what I think of when I think about some, some of what's happening here in this relationship with the, you know, hey, I'm a professional this. And so, you know, because it's not the same as like using somebody who is, I don't know, a plumber or some, you know, and you're, or, or even yeah. builds a house for you. But. Even what if it was Sheila and Troy? They don't really know Troy. Y'all ain't really that cool. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead and handle it. I mean, maybe yeah, like the Sheila and Troy thing would be different if they were like, you know what? We've been or married, Mike but and let's Trina. get divorced. Yeah. Or Mike and Trina, right. Yeah. Then it's like, because you're not friends with the both people. But there might even still be an issue with, I just don't want you in my business to that degree. Yeah. 
you know, um, because I think that there is judgment that comes Especially, along with some stuff. So why would she go with her when she don't even want to share anything, right? Diane doesn't want to share anything. She go well, Patricia doesn't want to share anything. Mm-hmm. She goes to Diane and say, look at everything that I yeah, own and how much everything's worth. Money. And, yeah. But maybe, but, but maybe there, see, here's the deal. You don't want to share. Some people don't want to share, but it's in, it's compartmentalized. I may not want to share my feelings, but I don't care if you know how much money I make. Somebody else might be like, I'll share my feelings all day long, but how much I make is my business, you know? So, and some people don't want you to know nothing, you know? Do so, you trust her to keep that uh, privilege when she goes back to tell Terry how much money she's hiding from Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and then Terry goes and be like, man, she's hiding money from you. She's hiding money. That's probably how he found out. <laughs> you know, but he'd be like, you know, she got $800,000 from that book hid away in an yeah. account. But Diane was like, yeah, they just going to split everything down the middle except the 800000 she put to the side from the book. I mean. And Terry's I, like, hey, she's keeping money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pillow talk gone wrong. But, um... But what I do like in this situation is that, first of all, Diane doesn't really come off as a gossip. But second of all, they make it clear that when it comes to her career, she is not playing. Even with Terry, she is not going to tell Terry the business of what transpired. Like, even if she would have told Terry personal business that her friend had told her not attorney client privilege stuff. Then, but in this case, look, this is, but this is work, this is business, and this is money. And uh, we're not about to be playing that game. So that happens. And it's all good. You know, she and then he's just like, all right, I guess I'm gonna go see my friend. Then he starts obsessing because she's like, oh, I'm about to make chicken, chicken. You must have had a really great day at work. You're so happy, honey. And he looking at these flowers that she brought in with the groceries. And he's like, um, did a card come with these flowers? Just come with the card? No. And she's like, uh, no. And then he pulls out the stick that the card would have been on, right? No. No. Oh. There's a stick. Clearly she's lying. And she's like, oh, well, the florist must have made a mistake. He's like, the florist made a mistake. Ugh. Florist made a mistake. Huh? Okay, I'm going to get started on the chicken. Because, you know, again, here we are. Terry is so observant yeah. of every single thing. He is super sleuth Terry. But, but yeah, no you subtlety. don't know she worked with a dude named Phil. There's no subtlety in the delivery movie. of this. Yeah. But Gavin, yeah, go see Gavin. He's going to tell you, oh, yeah, Phil from the firm, he's uh, my attorney. How would that make you feel? <laughs> You'd be like, so your attorney is the man who is probably sticking his boy boy and my wife. Or who I at least suspect of that, right? Yeah. That's weird. But wouldn't Gavin have already told him? Maybe they don't talk that much. Like, oh, yeah, you know who's representing me? Somebody from this firm that we both know, dude named Phil or whatever. And look, she slipped up Phil and said Jackson. Phil's name. So, you know, Diane ain't telling him it's Phil. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. and his attorney is Phil. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you go fill up the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> fill up a vase with water so I can put these flowers <laughs> in it. That Phil gave me. <laughs> Fill up a vase so that Phil's flowers. <laughs> what a mess. What a mess. From the bedroom? And you heard this from your neighbor? Yeah, can you believe that? Three of the ladies are out for drinks. And um, it is Angela and Diane and Sheila. And so when Sheila walks up, before she gets there, Angela has been telling Diane about the neighbor who had told her she's hearing sex noises coming from uh Angela's house while she's gone so Angela is of course suspecting that Marcus is in there cheating and so Diane is like listening intently and it's sort of like is she listening to get herself a new client for a divorce <laughs> bruh <laughs> uh but then when all the ladies come in uh, when uh Sheila joins the group and they start to ask about how you know you know what's basically going on with Pat and Gavin's divorce and how is Pat and all that she's like Cause guys just don't even ask me again so she's clear when it comes to her attorney client privilege she is not going to talk wasn't about asking it all that. and 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 say anything they right, say on how the is subject. she and she's like I can't she's even like, tell, can't you tell you how, how I friend is. it okay. You guys, I can't talk about the case. Please don't, okay. don't ask me. Yes. But check this out, though. 
So they are talking about how it's so devastating that Pat and Gavin are getting divorced and how they were the template for the greatest marriage and all this and that. And so Diane says, well, whenever I got into it with Terry, I would say, well, what would Patricia do? Bruh. Um, and, you know, I can't help but think about like the whole line of like, what would Jesus do? Yeah. And <laughs> but how would she know? That's how she look at her. Mm -hmm. How would she know what Terry, what Patricia would do when you know that Patricia ain't even sharing nothing? And she just like you. That's probably just, why you want to pat on yourself after her. Yeah. So you wouldn't know what she would do because she never shared sh shared any negative. Mm hmm. So then they go on into um, Angela's like, well, you know, what happened between them? Is, is Gavin is cheating, ain't he? He's cheating on her, ain't he? Gavin. Yes, no, didn't he? Come on, no. give up the good stuff. I mean, she would say that he did, but. She's not supposed to be talking attorney client privilege and everything, right? Diane ain't supposed to be saying nothing. But then Diane is like, well, he, well, she didn't say he was cheating. So, like, <laughs> aren't you talking about what you had just made this big production that you ain't talking about? Like, haven't you gone into the conversation? But anyway, it rolls on to them talking about cheating. And you could see Diane's wheels turning because, you know, she's like, well, how do you really know your spouse is cheating? And just because you think he, you suspect or whatever doesn't mean he's really cheating. Just because you suspect, that doesn't mean that it's the truth. It just doesn't. And she's kind of commenting on, on Angela's situation with Marcus. But at the same time, she's clearly, I think, talking about her own situation, too. Um... But what I wonder, and you, you know, hi, tell me what you think. But does she suspect that Terry suspects something is up with her? And does she even care? Uh, I think she may suspect it, but I don't think that's what she's talking about in the moment. Because just like with everything else, you just can separate it, right? Mm -hmm. She's probably just like, how do you know? But because usually... You know, we get the movies and stuff where it shows that the man is cheating, right? Mm. But then he don't want the woman to be cheating, right? So it's just kind of that sort of thing. She do what she do, but she still want to know whether or not the man is cheating. Hmm. And But hmm. she like, how would I know double if Terry, yeah. Yeah, if Terry's stepping out, how will I know? Because, I mean, if you remember in the last movie, you know, Terry, she was feeling like Terry was getting it on with his um, nurse that, you know, because the nurse was always around and yeah. picking her kids up from school and, you know, doing birthday celebrations but with Terry. But Terry's perfect, so that wasn't happening. It wasn't happening allegedly <laughs> yeah so then angela went through all the things she does to check up on marcus to make sure he's not cheating i'm checking his cell phone bill i'm checking the numbers that he was calling on the cell phone bill. i'm checking his mileage but the kicker is that's what terry is doing uh, uh -huh. <laughs> he's doing all those things that angela's talking about she, he's which checking. is why i feel like the wheel is turning in her head when you watch Diane. Yeah, maybe. Her wheels are turning because she don't listen. She know Terry's a control freak. He probably she probably know he's sitting over there. Eight point two miles and <laughs> <laughs> like like uh Angela was doing. You know, he knows everything. He's so observant. They make that like they drill that home in these movies. Terry just observes everything. He says he's observant. He is observant. He's just the smartest, most perfect person ever. Except he's a control freak and maybe the N word that ends in narcissist. Well, that's not <laughs> how it's supposed to be taken. Yes. So, but Diane is like, hey, look, I ain't doing all that to figure out if, uh, if he's cheating. I ain't getting ready to go to all that trouble. That's a full time job. But your man is. Hmm. Hey. You good, buddy? Um, yeah. So Marcus and Terry show up to help Gavin moves a few items from the house uh, where he that he has shared with Patricia all these years. And they go up to the door and, and Gavin just throws a potted plant through the window to gain entry because Patricia has changed the lock. She changed the locks. Yeah, but they show up and he's just sitting there looking all distraught, right? But Terry is so observant. He don't even realize what's going on with Gavin. Hmm. He's just like, are you going to open the door? You don't see something wrong with this dude? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. You ready to move? Like, really? It's like a TV show scene, right? You know, on TV shows, stuff that's just obvious to the audience, the people who there don't notice. Yeah. But that the, that's not how it works in movies, right? But... This is happening in a movie where it's clear that there's something that's wrong with this guy, but the people there just don't even see it. 
What they could have done to fix this in this scene would have been like, you know, he he observes that Gavin seems down. You just make the assumption that he's down because obviously his marriage is breaking up and this ain't an easy time for yeah. him. So he pats him on the shoulder, man, it's going to be all right. Let's go on inside. Right. That wouldn't have made us sit up here and think, yeah. all right, he, you know, the most observant man in history uh, is ignoring the obvious yeah. and it would have been more of the shocker if oh everything is cool it's like oh yeah come on let's go on inside and then he just pick up the pot and throw it through the window bam misdirection yeah it was still pretty dead on shocking to see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh see him throw that through the window so then marcus and terry are standing there like what just happened but they go on inside and he's just like, all right, well, help me get these things. Gavin is just trying to get them to help him get the stuff so he can get out before Patricia comes back. We came to help you move. I don't want to be a part of no crap with y'all. No, that's fine. OK, I have some suitcases and boxes over there, some other stuff. in there. Terry's instinct does at least kick in because, you know, he don't want to be in no mess. So he said, well, I don't want to be a part of no crap with y'all, you know, and. Uh, I don't want to be caught up and all of that. And but at the same time, he doesn't leave. He still sticks around. And then the next thing, um, you know, he tries to talk to him like, well, hey, you know, y'all ain't got nothing left to fight for after 14 years. 14 years you've been with this woman. There's got to be something in them 14 years somewhere that's worth fighting for. You know, and then he goes on into talking about how, you know, I don't love my wife all the time. We don't love each other all the time. And I don't love my wife all the time. She don't love me all the time. OK, it's marriage. It goes in cycles. You know, using his what? own situation as an example sense. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's stupid. I don't love it. You, of course, you still love her. It's just that you might not like her in that moment when y'all argue or whatever. But like, I mean, you know, the love is still there. He's uh, Gavin is saying that Patricia then said he don't she doesn't love him anymore. So, like, that's a problem that I think is a lot bigger to fix than just these, um, you know, empty words from Terry in a yeah. moment that is high intensity already. Yeah. And then, like, a scary movie, Patricia just pops up behind him looking all Crazy. messed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the game you want to play with me? And then she starts to tear up the place. Wait, Patricia, wait a minute. What are you, Patricia? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And... I think we hear Terry talking about Patricia. Wait a minute. If I'm in a situation, I'm leaving. I'm just gone. Ain't no sitting around watching this happen and trying to tell you stop. No, I'm I'm out the door because this don't look safe. Well, yeah. And she's swinging like golf clubs, multiple golf clubs, breaking all the stuff in the house. Like you're in the house after he is broken in into the house, which I don't I don't really know. She changed the locks. But at the same time, this is his residence. And I don't think legally you could just put somebody out like that. Um, yeah, but we know how there, the law but, works, right? You, yeah. They don't prevent you from doing stuff. This is true. Just like legally, Mike possibly had a right to be at uh, the little resort, but that don't mean he should stay there. Well, and I'm not saying that Gavin should stay, but I'm just saying like, so the fact that he broke into where he lives, yeah, you know, might not matter. be that like, it's, yeah, but that that was my point. It's, it's all just, part of the let divorce me get my stuff and what stuff is in place already by whatever judge. Right. So even they were talking about the money, we'll get that into um, when we talk about them specifically is how do how does he just clear the bank accounts? Yeah. Like wouldn't there be some sort of an escrow or something that just says, bam, money can't move? Yeah, I would think. But, you know, again, so, so, you know, so you still see Terry trying to be a mediator. But like after things have escalated to the point where Patricia is clearly unhinged at this moment, Gavin is like trying to get his few little boxes uh, out of there and his golf clubs and whatnot. And um, Patricia's like, get out of my house and you better listen to her because she clearly was um, she going to come downstairs with a gun next. You know, that that seemed basically how she was acting um, in that situation. And it's just like you said, was unsafe. So, like, why are you even sticking around? Yeah. Ridiculous. I'm out. I've never seen her like this. You need to at least call her or something. Diane is laying out her sexy undergarments for the next day. <laughs> and Terry observes her. And will refuse to leave until she opens the door. And he's asking her, you going to wear that to work? You're wearing that to work? Yeah. He's like, yes. And he's like, hmm. Hmm. Sexy. Hmm. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, sexy. And they start kissing. She comes over and, you know, Terry stops the kiss and whatever in the middle. And he's just like, have you slept with him? 
Have you slept with him? So, what? Wouldn't that be the assumption? That yeah, that she slept he, with the he guy. He thinks really high of her. Yeah, highly he does. Of her, well, where he he's should. Like, That's his wife. Yeah, but he's like, okay, she's probably doing something, but she, it's still questionable whether or not they smashing. Well, then he goes into what I think is like weirdo level. It's very weird. Red flag level because detail. It wasn't like he said on this day, on this date, right? He was like, 63 days ago, <laughs> you came home <laughs> and you were different. 63 days ago, honey, you came home and you were different. Like, are you just counting off the days, man? And then you take care of your clothes and makeup. You seem happy. From that day to this one, you just get happier and happier. And he's like, don't make me think I'm crazy when I know. Honey, it's you that makes me. Don't, don't, don't make me think I'm crazy when I know. Well, now, you are said, crazy for <laughs> Because she said, honey, it's you that makes me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's hilarious. Said, honey, it's you that makes me happy. <laughs> but uh, he said, don't make me think I'm crazy when I know. So, yes, he does know. And there were enough clues that he should know if he didn't know prior to this. But at the same time, you are crazy because the level of detail and obsession Bruh. that you have over what's going on without having said anything this whole time. 63 days. Yeah. You know, it um, was like you, you smelled like him and all this and ain't said a thing. She said his name is Phil. You, you didn't know, bring it up. And first shoe, first, first lipstick on the collar. It's going to be questions asked. You know what I'm saying? Huh. I don't know. You just sitting on this. OK. Yeah. But, but then well, there's this other line. He say. You can't be this arrogant to think I wasn't paying attention. I'm in tune with you. You can't be this arrogant to think that I wasn't paying attention. For you to say that it's a lot of arrogance. Mm-hmm. Bruh. Like It's what? your arrogance. That's projection. Yeah. He's like, you know that I'm so super smart and I'm a super sleuth. You know that I'm observant. You know I'm a genius and I just know everything that's happening around me. And so then he says, Is his name Phil? Bro, you already should know his name is Phil. And let He's me like just Philip. read. Is his name Philip? <laughs> Let me just recant what I said before because he doesn't, Phil doesn't work at her firm. She confirms that Phil works at a different firm. At a different. So it's, he's an attorney. He works at another firm. Family, family law firm. firm. Yes. So it kind of makes it a little bit, you know, I guess more feasible, although definitely still close for comfort for oh. them to be representing um, Gavin and Patricia but in the divorce. But yeah. So when they were talking about it, when she was like, yeah, we talked about it. And she's putting her clothes out every day and wearing all this makeup. Are they meeting every single day? Uh, maybe she only do it on a day she's meeting him. But like he started naming off straight out dates. What happened on March the 8th? What do you mean? That night you came to this house and you made love to me. You know, such and such a date, March this, March 8th, you know, and I'm like, bro. And then my question is, how do you even freaking know? How does she remember the dates? Because somebody asked me about some March 8th. Somebody asked me about last week. I'm going to be like, well, which Bruh. day are we? I got questions to even answer your Speaking question. Speaking of attorney, she better know because that's what attorneys like to do. Well. They be like, on March 17th at about 6.47 p.m. But do you have it on the top of your head? No, they would have to look at their notes generally. Yeah, you know. but if you say you don't know, just think about it. Um, you're accused. You need an alibi. The, the attorney is going to say, you need an alibi for this day three years ago. <clears throat> now tell me where you were. Otherwise, you're going to jail. You well, know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, 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 but again, this is all off the top of the head. That's all I'm saying. He's laying in the bed naming off dates with no notepad or she's like looking at Yeah, but at I'm talking phone. about on her and remembering. She's, and if, she's actually. That's what I'm saying. But she is the attorney, right? So you better be able to do this because you were, I'm so at some level you required of others. Well, I'd be like, well, listen, let me look at my um, debit card and see where I might have been that day. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, to me, I think that's a perfectly reasonable answer. Don't ask me about nothing from no however many, even in the last 63 days and you got a busy life. Who the heck knows where you were at? Granted, she was up to no good. She she was up to no good, even though it was in the under the guise of work. You clearly are having an emotional affair because she does say that they did not do the do. Um done anything i promise can but, you believe that though just because she said it 
Um, you can choose to, but that's a good question. Know, Go like, to the comments, y'all. Do y'all think that she had sex with the guy? So here, here's what I think. I think that she didn't have sex with him, but she was deeply enthralled in an emotional affair with him. I don't. Huh. But the the dangerous thing is that she eventually was going to get caught up. Now, was, see, she got caught before she got caught up. But see, she's already emotionally into this dude. She's open. And what I think she thinks is going to be able to happen is that I can have this little thing over here. I'm not crossing the line because I didn't have sex with him. It's just all in my head, so to speak. It's making her happy because she feels entitled to feel happy because she didn't give up all that she gave up for this man, you know, having a whole nother baby that she didn't want and all this other untying tubes and surgeries. So she, so, so, and I'm not defending it. I'm saying this is probably in her mind what was happening. And so she's just like, I'm gonna just play around with Phil a little bit, but I, I love my husband. I don't intend on leaving. I have this family and things are going good with the family. And this thing over here makes me feel happier. So it's an enhancement. I really think that that might have been her logic. And it's it's logic that I've heard from some other people regarding d doing things that are on the on the and morally. I think she feels that she's like, I didn't cross the line. So therefore, you know, but it's morally wrong. Mm -hmm. you, you are having an emotional affair. You might as well have went on and got you some jank because was what is really the difference? Mm -hmm. So was he single or not? 63 days, two months, you know. Was he, he single? Who, he Bill? asked you out. Yeah. yeah. He asked her out basically 63 days ago. And he's just been sticking around for two months, still trying to get it. And Phil is trash because Phil knows that she's married. Okay. That ain't Phil Phil's is sending problem. Fly yeah, but Phil is still trash. Phil is sending flowers and a train, you know, like to me, yeah, it's not his obligation and whatever, but it still is is a move of of moral repugnance, in my opinion. Yeah, but two months, like, bro, it's about time to give it up if you ain't getting nothing. Well, you know, but maybe Phil is playing. Maybe Phil is married too. Maybe she don't uh, wear her ring at work. It don't matter because, you know, places like that, you know. Part of your story <laughs> is your family, you know, pictures of them are probably Yeah, but they don't work together, so it changes. Yeah, but they come to each other's office. I'm sure they've been in each other's offices. No, they go out for lunch and talk about the case. Yeah, but they probably are there. At How the... often? I don't know. They made time to see each other regularly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they don't always have cases that they're both on. Well, uh, how did, how did, I want to know how did Gavin get to be, um, Phil get to be Gavin's lawyer because she probably Just was like, you draw. know, um, Gavin ain't been in a big old city like supposedly Atlanta. Gavin ain't just found this one dude who just happens to be having an emotional affair with his good friend's wife. In Tyler Perry world. Well, uh, so many coincidences. Like, why is that? Why was that even po even required for it to happen that way? Uh, like why can't couldn't he just have his own attorney but terry terry takes it even further in this though he's like when we were having sex were you thinking about him when we were having sex you were thinking about him well she's basically confirmed she said yeah but I won't see him again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, I won't ever see him again. I'll never speak to him. It's not worth this. Lies. You, you, you're, you're, you're going to see, see him. him. You're going to see him because of this case that you at least got to finish for Patricia. Well, how you going to not see him? Hmm. But she was desperate. She was like extra desperate, more desperate than at the end of the last movie when she he? begged him. She. Please, I'm sorry. No, I'm saying he Diane. should get with her and then be like, hey, I think you should convince her to just go ahead and split that money in half. Because he clearly got her. See, that's why you don't do stuff like this. Mm, <laughs> you mean uh, Phil? Yeah, Phil. So Phil is having pillow talk with her and he's like, give up half that money. Yeah. Then he wins the money for Gavin. Yeah. Which, in the end, is just going to go right back to Patricia since we know what happens. <laughs> I don't know. That's weird to me, though. It's just too close for comfort. It's still, I don't care how it goes. But, but she's devastated now, and they are more than on the rocks because he gets up and leaves. <laughs> Jerry! 
So the guys are all together and they're having a drink at O'Malley's. We hear Terry talking about the situation with Diane. And he's like, I don't blame this guy talking about Phil. It doesn't matter, um, you know, whether or not she slept with him because women are different and this is an emotional affair and that's way worse than sex in his book, right? Women are emotional creatures and when they have an affair, emotionally, it's, it's way worse than sex. Um, what do you think about what he said? We hear this all the time, but we know that their roles are reversed since the first movie. But yet, she, in this case, though, it's the whole... Yeah. Oh, it's just emotional, right? Yeah. It's not just emotional. It's emotional with a woman from a woman, so it's worse. Hmm. So uh, whatever. Because when you start to do things to basically just stereotype whole groups, then you're just going to be wrong sometimes, right? Yeah. So anytime people start saying men do this and women do that, you know, I just yeah, whatever. I'm not even really paying attention to you. Well, and like I was saying before, I, I Diane was on that road. See, Diane thought she had it under control, but Phil was about to get them draws. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He already he got wasn't, him. If he didn't already get him, he was about to get him. Look, do y'all think that she slept with him? Because did we, did we establish that? Because I know you think so. I don't think she actually did, but I think it was coming soon to a theater near you. She was about to be smashing this dude because she thought she had it under control, but she was wide open. And this guy knew how to do it right, right? You know, he makes me laugh. He, he know that. He know he's stroking all of the right things yeah, to line it up. Yeah, sending flowers and all that. And yeah, she's open the to flowers. it. Yeah, flowers. She probably was over there. Terry never sends me flowers. Next thing you know, he's sending a flower, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe she wasn't because she's not really the talkative type like that. But still, so it would have been, if it hadn't happened yet, it would have been soon. If he hadn't come out when he did, in a month or two, she'd have been laid up with that dude, contemplating, contemplating leaving him all together, leaving, <laughs> leaving yeah, Terry like, with the hey, two Terry, kids. Hey, Terry, you got your kids. Now you can live your life. <laughs> I'll pay child support, Terry. I don't even care. <laughs> like <laughs> this, this could have really happened. But at the same time, I'm being, I'm being really hard because Diane. Diane didn't love her kids. Diane was just in a rock and between a rock and a hard place. And it probably might not have been the best thing for her to stay with him. Especially after we see what happens in the second movie, because I think that she was just checked out. Huh. And but but she didn't want to lose, you know, I, maybe it was a fear of the unknown, you know, because maybe she just didn't want to lose her family or, be, you know, be divorced because there's stigma related to that. You know, maybe she yeah, just didn't but, want that. No, she just found her 20 percent. Right. Man. I guess. Or maybe it's just on top of that. Like everything could just be fine. And then here comes. Fabio, you Dude, know, like he got his child and I got a little Phil on the side. Yeah, that's it. it but happens. I don't have sex with Phil, you know, and yeah, not yet. my little fantasy about Phil makes my sex better with Terry. Like, you know, maybe that's what it was. But at the end of the day, like. But she was doing extra, though. It wasn't just that she was, you know, doing her taking a little longer to do her makeup buying nice panties and stuff to the wear things to work you do and, when it's new right you know yeah but if it's it's you're trying to further something over there is why you do that yeah yeah it ain't yeah. just oh i just this guy who i know and you know me spending time with him make you're doing things to progress that she was acting like she was acting when she first got with terry yeah basically you know, there were some people in the comments in the previous video who made comments to something like she didn't like a lot of you said it. I don't know where where it all came from, but um, said she didn't like Terry like that. She never liked Terry like that. Yeah. It's the same phrase a lot of you used. But I disagree because I think that she did fall in love with Terry. I think that they had something at one point, but yeah. I think she realized as at some point along the way that Terry yeah. was very overbearing and controlling. But Terry's complaint wasn't that she is being distant from him or not treating the same. The only thing is that for the last 63 days, she's been even extra happy, right? So I don't think it's that there is nothing there. 
Yeah. So I don't it know how. It was good for two months. It was, up until the last two months. Yeah, it's probably even still good, right? It's just there's this extra on top of it. What if she had just been going along having all of these, like, emotional affairs like little small emotional affairs little mini crushes that she was having on co-workers or whoever Bruh. the hell you know the guy who sells the coffee the barista whatever you yeah. know just people in her everyday work life and then that was just giving her a little buzz or whatever and then you know then it, then she was just at home with terry that's her husband and she ain't yeah. trying to cheat quote unquote yeah. cheat on him physically but what if it was just this one time right because think about the first movie. She just didn't care or nothing, never liked him. Why does she care so much about whether or not he's cheating when he could have checked out at that point, too? Because I think that she loves Terry. I think yeah. that she want to be with Terry. I exactly. just think that Terry is she found Terry. found something new. And, and the, the something new is always going to look shiny and yeah, pretty. But exactly. the, what's new is going <laughs> to get old, too. Remember that, hmm. you know, and that that's always kind of the whole and not just about these things, but that's the whole grass is greener on the other side. Right. If it's something new and different, it always seems better in the beginning. Yeah. But see, that's what um, I guess a lot of people don't get. And it's just a lot of folks just stuck on that where, OK, this this even a new thing, the new thing ain't what I want it to be. So then. I need to go somewhere else, right? Mm. Oh, I just got into this relationship. Uh, this one thing is off and it's not the perfect thing that I want. So I'm going to choose less, right? Because people talk about settling. I won't settle, right? Because if I don't get everything that's on my list and I'm settling, right? But oh. that a lot of times, if you don't get everything, it's still better than not having any of that. But they choose to go back to the to zero rather than being stuck at 60. And amen on that. But even even more so, half the time you don't even know what you want or you got a list of something you think you want and you get it and you realize yeah. you don't want or it. Or it's not what's best for so, you. Or it's not what's <laughs> best for you. So why would you even commit to like this whole all or nothing type of of approach to it is just ridiculous yeah. to me. You know, you just, you look at it and you go, okay, it's pretty good. And it's pretty good, good enough yeah. or not. But now that I think about it, I think back, one of the things that Diane said was that, oh, he's makes me laugh. Right. In the second movie, we see Terry trying to be more funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But does yeah. he know that this other person is making her laugh? Maybe it's been talked about before that, you know, he's kind of boring or something, right? Yeah. And it could be everything is fine. She's always liked him, always loved him. But she gets the funny guy, right? Mm -hmm. And Terry just not the funny guy. And she likes people that make her laugh. Like probably everybody like people that yeah. make them laugh, but right? The, 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 and, and that's the thing, right? So like there is no one package that has every single thing. You get the funny guy, but, you know... He he doesn't want to work and you got to take care of him. You get this guy over here and he's boring. You get that guy, you know, uh, it, it's like nobody's going to be perfect. Well, I mean, on the flip side, it might be that, oh, you know, this woman is a great cook and she's beautiful and whatever. But like she's not going to do something else or, you know, hey, she's brilliant and she's an attorney and all of this. But she don't want to have kids. And that was the issue in their marriage yeah. at one point. You know, so like no, no situation or a person is going to be perfect. And it's crazy to me that people would rather be miserable. They will say it's not being miserable. That's what makes them happy. What makes me happy is not having some of what I want. Right. Hmm. Let's say, hey, for my birthday, I wanted a brand new suit. I wanted a cake and I wanted ice cream. All I got was a cake and a new suit. So I'd rather not have any of it. And that's what makes me happy. That is what's happening. Le that that is that's you're right. exactly what's happening. That's that's what people are saying, and it's just ridiculous. Give me nothing for my birthday because I couldn't get all three things. And I don't think it's anything wrong with with saying that you want certain you want things, things and yeah. and and that you haven't found those things yet either. You know, I think that that people are um or uh, I don't know if it would be demonized, but like definitely looked at it, it critically if they were to admit like, hey, I'm single and I, I don't want to be. Yeah. Every person I know that I've seen social media wise and other people who say that they're single, 
they all say I'm single yeah. and I'm happy and I'm single and I, like I don't it. date. I'm single and I don't want to be, yeah. you know, and this is not a, a thing to, you know, criticize anybody who's single or that situation. But I don't see anything wrong with if you're single saying I'm single, but I don't want to be single. I want to yeah. find my person. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. I got a Civic and I want a Benz. You know, you like, know. What, is there something wrong with that? And it's nothing wrong if you're single and you just don't want to be bothered with it, yeah. you know, with anybody in any situation. You know, I know people who. But yeah, it seems like a lot of people who say that still go out and try to be with people. Because they're not they're not being honest about it. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm single. It's you like, know. I don't want no job, but why are you going on interviews? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. Lying to yourself. So. I just think that Diane was just getting some extra. So should they stay together as a couple, Terry and Diane? The problem is that they have kids. A lot of people who uh, have kids with people who they aren't with probably just think it's okay. But me personally, if I'm giving my personal opinion on the matter, I, I, I weigh that. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you got kids. And yeah. 10 more years of you being unhappy is hey, for them to have an intact be situation. It's just, that's the price you pay. <laughs> the or, <show's> better. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, if, if whenever it's not kids, it's easy for me, mm -hmm. depending on how mixed up their, uh, what else they got going on with like businesses and stuff. But they all these couples seem to just do everything separately. It's just, no, just go ahead and split up. I think we, you could just wait and see. At the end of the day, because life is going to get hard and ugly really fast if you try to make this split at this moment. And I don't think you're likely to be any happier. Any anybody involved, you, him, the kids. I don't That's think you're likely to be funny. any happier in the yeah. near future as a result of this. If you get something out of this movie, right, it's that. You know, people like, hey, I'm going to break up with this person, split up because it's going to make me happy because you're trying to be happy. Everybody just want to be happy. Right. Or are you trying to make your situation better? And then you break up and you're just still not where you thought you would be. It don't change that those sort of feelings. Right. You're still not happy. You done this drastic thing. You're not with the person and you're not happy. You could have been with the person and not happy, but then you get the cliche, I guess, the kind of, I could do bad all by myself. Yeah, well, what about um, the argument that could be made for the fact that Terry could be considered to be maybe overbearing and super controlling, and you maybe that's kids. something somebody wants to, <laughs> you say, look, you chose it. Um, you chose it twice. <laughs> I... So there, there is an argument I think that could be made for that. But, but at the end of the day, she could get a uh, feel to go ahead and be represent her. Shut He's up. probably really good. I just think that I think if the, uh, at the end of the day, man, just keep keep getting up every day and going to work and doing what the heck you do. And before what? you know it, what? you know, because that's what life is like. I, that's the basics of it. Like all of the vacations and everything. Every day is not going to be super rosy and there'll be things that piss you off in the day or whatever from time to time. But like as long as the baseline is not freaking horrible and you have good times on a regular basis and the bad times are kind of few and far between then what do you really want what are you asking for now if yeah. you just want to be with somebody different and you want something different but that's not what she's saying yeah here. terry she's why not did terry that. go here poking around trying to find stuff when everything was better for him after she met this guy she yeah. met this guy she's all bubbly she's smashing better and everything and then he gonna be like is you sleeping with him shut your mouth and just enjoy the time <laughs> even know if you're being sarcastic or what <laughs> shut your mouth terry <laughs> nothing's going on i don't even know how to take that because it just sounds so bizarre this is what happened but everything was being better if you go back to the first scene of the movie they're all happy jovial so you think terry and... should have just shut up and said whatever is happening yeah 
He should have just been like, <laughs> just don't sleep with him and then just move but on. But you know, there are people in marriages and situations where that's how it is. And, uh, you know, actually. Uh, Sound like you're about to gossip. Women. You said, actually. <laughs> But but I think because I'm always thinking about the, the female perspective, but like um, women who were I've been watching a lot of documentaries on history and these uh, people who were monarchs or whatever that were married, you know, women married to kings and how, the, you know, them being the queen and how they basically were limited in their power in, in a lot of ways and how they maneuvered to get power and favor even in that case, and that there were plenty of women who the king was going to get his, you know what I'm saying? He was going to have his side, you know, his, his concubines, his mistresses, whatever you want to call them. He was going to have these women and how did in their minds that they justify it. And I'm not saying I support this, but it's interesting to me that they saw a bigger goal besides whether he was entertaining somebody at some point on the side. And you hear this from some of the more rich people who married to athletes and stuff like that, that that that's just part of what you have to accept as a as a result of being with somebody who has a lot of money and power, especially men who have a lot of money and power. But there could be women who are the same way, you know, like, I don't know. Is Oprah like, listen, Sam, and if you want these bills paid, huh. then I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't know if that's the case, but I would imagine that. Very powerful men and women do have certain things in common and the entitled and the feelings of entitlement to whatever pleasures them, I think, would be in common for both. I don't know why, but it reminded me of this. So <laughs> there's this famous guy. Right. Uh -huh. And I am friends on Facebook with his wife because his wife is friends, best friends with a woman who I know through other people right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because i don't want to uh yeah basically yeah, no. give away who it is <laughs> and one day i just seen her post about she posted a picture of herself talking about yeah i would lie about sleeping with me too or something <laughs> and then i was like what is she talking about but her husband's famous so i had to go and google it <laughs> and then i found out what happened i'm like oh man this is crazy but you know, you never know if, if it's true or not, but that's all I'm saying. That's just for some reason. That's what I thought of when you mm. were talking about that. But I mean, you know, like these are tr there are certain types of things that are common that that happen when money and power are involved. So, but I mean, in this case, I don't think that was exactly you know what was going on with them. But you know, I mean, listen, you'll be surprised the people who. Like one couple who was always viewed when they were alive as like relationship goals that was famous was like Ruby D and Ozzy Davis. Oh, I thought I was going to say Bobby and Whitney. Shut up. Do not do Whitney like that. But uh, Ruby D and Ozzy Davis. Or the song No One by Alicia Keys. I think it's that one, right? What about? You mentioned all the couples. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the thing about their relationship, though, is that it lasted a long time. But they talk about how they were swinging it earlier in their relationship and that they realized how that was detrimental to their relationship at some point and that they decided they weren't going to do that anymore. You know, but back in the day, like they was getting wild, too. You know, it's like when I was coming up, they were like this old couple. So you don't really think about them as having been yeah. young at some point. But, they, you know, people were doing all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the song is Unbreakable by Alicia Unbreakable. Keys. Unbreakable. Okay. Yeah. You talk about Ike and Tina, Bill and Camille, Oprah and Stedman, Flo and James e Evans, uh, yeah, Will and Jada, the Jacksons, Joe and Catherine, yeah. Yeah, but they weren't all relationship goals, but yeah. But people who've been together a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's kind of, but and they really were. Ike and Tina? Yeah, no. Before we found out what happened. Okay. <laughs> I guess they built up Tina Turner together no matter what, but she didn't mention them like relationship goals. She's just talking about fighting. Mm. So, yeah. So people who were together for a long time, like the point is that they, uh, you know, there's ups and downs yeah. that you look around and, and, but that's life. And I think when you look at like any kind of relationships you have, not just romantic ones, 
You know, there were times where things might have yeah. been better and times where, you know, you might have fallen. But how hard the do you want it? It's the pro it's the question. All right. Yeah. So some things are small ups and downs. But if you got some big downs, I don't know about that one. It depends on the down. Like yeah. it's it's certain things I think that would be really, really, really taxing and challenging to deal with. Like two that I can think of off the top of my head would be like maybe severe mental illness. Um, because these are things that people can't necessarily help, you know, uh, and Harry maybe can't. drug, drug use. Terry can't help it. Angela can't help it. Yeah. So, you know, if you got that, though, if those are the things like, and you know, I'm not talking about smoke, just smoking weed or whatever. I'm saying like, you know, people who are severely addicted and have those types of issues, then, I could imagine that it would be very difficult to kind of stick it out. That and somebody who's mentally ill is just yeah. a hard thing. Yep. But um, pretty much that is all we That's get. It. We don't really get more of their relationship. We talked about this in the last video. But basically, at the end of the movie, you know, uh, Gavin meets his demise uh, as a result of stuff going on between him and Patricia. And then... The only thing that happens that brings all the couples back together is Patricia's like, you know, make it right. Love each other as she's sitting here waiting for news as to whether Gavin is going to make it or not. You know, so that's it. They all hug and kiss and make up. I think Terry and Diane are going to just stay together. I don't I don't see I don't see them leaving. But I do think that Diane yeah. is going to continue to mess up. Di yeah, because that's who she is. Terry's he going to be the same. Perfect. Right. But the first movie, she messed up. This movie, she messed up. They're going to just stick around, be together. And maybe it's going to be another young guy come along who she won't. She might get even better at concealing things. Next time, she's going to be like, yeah, I she can't gonna bring learn. these flowers yeah. home. He done told everything that, you, that he looking at. You know, but, um, but yeah, I think she's going to just continue her same pattern because ultimately the pattern that Diane has is one that is just kind of deceit and maybe lies of omission and outright lies because he asked her questions and she lied to his face um but i would say that is in response to and not blaming terry for it um because she's a grown woman but that's in response to terry's overbearing and controlling nature you know so she can't fight that in her mind straight on so she just uh avoids conceals and doesn't confront and does whatever she gonna do on the side. And that's problematic. And I just don't see either of them really changing. Yep. So if you made it this far into this breakdown of Terry and Diane's relationship from the 22 film, Why Did I Get Married To? Type feel up the tub in the comments so we know you're one of the real ones who stick around until the end. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out one of the videos on the screen right now.